Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this video we're going to examine the case of missing person Emma Filipoff. Emma Filipoff was a 26 year old woman who tragically disappeared on November 28, 2012 in Victoria, British Columbia. There is some very strange footage of her and some very peculiar circumstances leading up to her disappearance. So without further ado, let's get into it. Emma Filipoff has been missing from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada since November 28th, 2012. Originally from Perth, Ontario, Emma was a trained chef who had moved to Victoria in 2011. She had brief employment at the Redfish Bluefish seasonal seafood restaurant in Victoria's Inner Harbour. Since the work was seasonal, she had left the job on October 31st, 2012. However, she had assured co-workers that she would be back in the spring. In what police believe was preparation for her move back to Ontario, on November 21st, Philipoff had hired a tow truck and driver to tow her Mazda to a parking lot. Unbeknownst to her family, Emma had been living at a women's shelter shortly before her disappearance, even though reports state that she had enough money in her bank account to afford to rent a place. On November 23rd, Philipoff was captured on security footage at the Victoria YMCA, entering, then leaving, then entering multiple times as if possibly avoiding someone on the outside. Philipoff, however, kept a diary detailing her time in Victoria. None of it indicated she was being stalked or harassed, though some of it did indicate she may have been depressed, but not suicidal. In the days preceding her disappearance, Philipoff had phoned her mother in Ontario, asking if she could come home, and was told, of course. Each time her tone would quickly change, and Emma would then ask her mother not to come to get her. On the final call, her mother became aware that Emma had been staying at the women's shelter, and even though Emma had asked her not to come, she made plans to fly out immediately. Emma's last words to her mom were, I don't know how I can face you. Early on the day of November 28th, Philipoff had been captured on a 7-Eleven store video to buy a prepaid credit card for $200. She returned to the 7-Eleven store purchasing a prepaid cell phone. The video showed her hesitating in departing the store, seemingly checking the street outside. Reportedly, she left the women's shelter at 6 p.m. that day. Soon after, she hailed a taxi and asked to be taken to the airport. However, she soon exited the taxi for lack of adequate funds, even though she had a $200 prepaid card. She was last seen between the times of 7.30pm and 8.30pm, in front of the Empress Hotel. According to a witness, Dennis Key, an acquaintance of Philipoff, though he claims he only met her once before, Emma seemed confused. He saw her at a zebra crossing, refusing to cross the street. Key asked her if she was feeling okay, and asked her if she was being followed due to her paranoid mannerisms. Philipoff said she was okay, so not knowing what to do, he entered a nearby restaurant and made a phone call to the police, claiming there was a dazed and distressed woman pacing in front of the Empress Hotel. Sometimes I wonder too, like, should I just like stay a little bit longer and see what happened with the police, like whether to take her away or not, like, I, I just assumed that they were going to take her. He assumed that the police would pick her up and take her somewhere safe. They didn't. Victoria police arrived, took Emma's name and spent 45 minutes speaking with her. Deciding that she was not a threat to herself or anyone else, they released her. And that was the last time anyone saw her. Tragically, Emma's mother arrived at the women's shelter at 11pm, 
just three hours after she had last been seen. At midnight that night, Emma was officially classified as a missing person. After weeks of searching on land with no results, Victoria Police took to the water today as they searched for clues in the disappearance of Emma Filipov. She turned 27 this past weekend and she's now been missing for 42 days. Emma was last seen by two police officers walking... Investigators explored more than 200 leads, turning up minimal information. Most evidence indicates she was planning to return home to Ottawa. But there was no proof she had ever left the city. The prepaid phone she bought, it was never activated. Dennis Key, one of the last people to see her, he later took a polygraph and was cleared. Investigators would find her vehicle the following morning, a red Mazda MPV 93 van, parked at Chateau Victoria parking lot, containing all of Philipoff's belongings, including her laptop, rented books and identification items, such as her passport and library card. There was another man who had been romantically interested in Emma when she lived back in Ontario, and he apparently got himself into some trouble with Emma's dad for stalking her. He also claims that it was pure coincidence that he happened to move to Victoria at the same time as Emma, though police cleared him of any suspicion. There's someone that, that won your heart in Perth who leaves and then all of a sudden of all places you decide to go it's the one place in the world where she is and that's just a coincidence yeah the odds are amazing yeah. but it's a coincidence it's a pure coincidence in 2014 the owners of a vancouver store reported that a man came in and threw out a missing poster of emma telling them it's one of those missing persons posters except she's not missing She's my girlfriend and she ran away because she hates her parents. This man was caught by the store's security cameras, but has never been identified. Emma's mom, Shelley Philpoff, has passionately advocated for her daughter's case from day one. She spent months in the Victoria area immediately following Emma's disappearance, and has campaigned on foot in areas Leeds have pointed to. In a strange twist, a 2015 police raid of her home near Ottawa, Ontario, discovered a myriad of drugs and weapons. Charges were laid against her but eventually dropped. Her son, a realtor, who was the subject of an ongoing drug trafficking investigation, had been stashing contraband in Shelley's home without her knowledge. In the summer of 2018, a witness named William came forward with new information. He encountered Emma the morning after she disappeared. He gave her a ride after finding her extremely distraught on the shoulder of the road. He was on his way to work, a job he had literally just started, and that morning he woke up late and was late to work. On his way into work, he came across a young lady that appeared to be upset and screaming on the side of the road. It's believed that Emma may have suffered from some sort of mental breakdown. He drove her approximately five minutes up the road where he dropped her off at the intersection of Admiral and Craig Flower. Emma claimed to be going to Colwood to see a friend. However, no one knows who that friend is. Emma's prepaid credit card was allegedly found shortly after she disappeared on the side of the road in Colwood. It was found by a stranger whose use of the card to purchase cigarettes was tracked by police. So what happened to Emma? Did she have some sort of breakdown? Did she try and leave to start a new life? Some commented on the theory that because she used to work at a seafood restaurant, maybe she got mercury poisoning. I find that extremely unlikely. And it's strange, her diaries don't really mention anything unusual. Well, some parts of it were kind of strange, but she did have a poetic writing style. Hopefully, Emma will turn up alive someday. But who really knows? This has happened so many times before. 
Who knows how it will end, or even if it will end at all. We may never simply know what happened to Emma. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Mike out. Thank you.